Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2 Basics Day 2, and today we are going to go through the full Haro menu. So, this may take a little bit, but hopefully, you know, I will be able to show you guys something you did not already know. So, press triangle to bring up your Haro menu. Okay, from the top, this is Mobile Suit, Pilot Options, Challenges, Database, Store, Options, and added to the menu since the uh, first uh, since the f uh, first time I went through this way back when the game came out is save. If you want to save your game, just press circle right here and it will save your current setups. If you don't do this, the game only uh, saves otherwise when you log out or play a match. So if you've made changes to your mobile suit's equipment or purchased things from the DP store, it will not be saved unless you have done that, so keep that in mind. Okay, so under the mobile suit option, you have two options. Customize and paint. Um, I showed off the paint recently, but I will go through the basics of how the paint uh, controls when, uh, when we get there. But first up is customize. Customize lets you... Okay, so there's a few things you can do. Um, you can tag your mobile suits so that they show up in these special categories under L1 and R1. So you can set up, like, favorites lists, basically. Um, you can, if you hold square, you can sort by cost, level, rarity, category, don't know, might be most used, can't tell. Also don't know. Oh, man, I'm really good at this, huh? Yeah, so those last three I don't really recognize. But cost, level, and rarity, and category, which will switch between, I'm pretty sure... Well, let's find out. Yes. Category searches between... Uh, let you sort them by uh, uh, the three types of mobile suit, which we'll get into when we get to the combat basics. I think this sorts them by model, because all of my Zaku cannons and such are together. Or, I'm not sure what the, uh, what the uh, special requirement is there, but... Yeah, whatever that last one is, it seems to sort them by model, because that seems to... Uh, let's see, uh, that seems... Well, it seems to uh, so, uh, group them all together. So does this one, but I'm not quite sure... Okay, this one... Ah, we're learning together. I'm sorry this is so awkward. Like I said, I'm doing this all off the cuff, so... I'm learning as you see. This setting, which is the one below category, sorts them by where they are usable. That icon on the left is usable on ground. The one on the right is usable in space. The default uh, sort gives you ground at the top, followed by both, followed by space. So, okay, we've figured that out. I like to sort mine by cost because generally that's... What I'm going to be looking at in a hurry when I'm getting into a room. Each category has different filters, so you can, you know, if you only if you hold a square and press left and right, you can see just things between 400 and 500 points, of which I have one, or you can set it for no preference. All right, now the uh, one last thing before we move on to the mobile suit options. Um, the stat block here. Let me uh, translate it as best I can. Um, top is well. There's the cost. The symbol to the right of the symbols to the right of that are whether it can be used in ground on uh, ground or in space. As you can see, the Gundam is an all rounder. It can be both. The Easy Eight and a Freak Kai are are both uh, ground types, so they can only be used there. The symbol to the right of that is their type. Um, the Easy 8 and the Gundam are general types. They're more or less good at everything and, you know, are not overly specialized generally into one category. Assault types are weak against general types, but strong against support types, and they tend to be faster and more damage-oriented with lower defense. These do not hold universally true, but that's just like the vague, you know, the, the vague, you know, guidelines that they base this around. The last type, like the Zaku Cannon here, is the support type, which is generally intended for medium to long range use. 
uh, does more damage against generals and less against uh, assault types. Okay, so let's go back to the Gundam here and use it as our a basis for comparison. The stat, uh, let's go down the stat block. Under cost, the first thing is hit points, which, you know, you can actually make that out. Uh, below that, ballistic armor. Next down is beam defense. Let's say defense rather than armor. It makes more sense. And the next, uh, and the next stat down is melee defense. The pluses mean that you have option parts which improve these, uh, these specs. Um, the... Next, uh, the next uh, stat down is shooting correction, which basically ups your attack power from the base of whatever the, uh, uh, the mobile suit's weapon does. Below that is melee correction, same except for, you know, same as shooting correction, except for beam sabers, Gundam hammers, and the like. Next down is speed, followed by thruster, which I believe is more a, more a, uh, measure of capacity than actual uh, speed uh, that's a different that's a different spec because as you can see the easy eight has a pretty good uh, has thruster stat it has fairly high capacity the Efreet moves very quickly especially in the exam mode but it exhausts its boost faster than the Gundam or easy eight does by a good margin um, okay so when you hit l2 oh I'm sorry Okay, so next thing down are the three different uh, uh, part slots, which I don't really know what they're called, but I just call them the top, middle, and bottom slots. And each custom part you can equip to a mobile suit requires a certain number of points in each of those categories in, in, able, uh, in order to fit. If you hit L2, you have the respawn time, the number of times used, the rarity level, the Gundam is a three star, the cost in development points, which it is in red because the Gundam cannot currently uh, be, uh, be received through the DP store. As you can see, the Dom can, ah, that, excuse me, that is not the cost. Ah, I'm doing great today. Anyway, uh, welcome to the flail throughs method. I don't actually know much Japanese. I just blundered through. Um, but yeah, what it is as requirement, rank requirement to be purchased through the DP store is what these mean. So you need to be the large diamond uh, rank level one to get the uh, Dom, the level three Dom or Jim Striker. You need to be the three large diamond or the three small diamonds rank level one for the level one gun tank. Uh, Dom Tropen not available through that store. Zgok actually cannot be acquired in any way right now. It was a short campaign uh, that uh, made it available. But yeah, as you can see, the level 1 Dom, you only have to be rank f level 5 of the first rank. So that's fairly easy. Um, the level 1 Zaku Kai is not shown uh, as any rank because you get it for free when you start the game. But yeah. As you can see, more powerful and expensive mobile suits tend to have longer respawn times. That's pre it's, it's pretty much tied to cost. So the more you cost, the longer it tends to take you to spawn back in. The shortest being 5 seconds, the highest I have at the moment being 15. Okay, so, and I hit the wrong button. Uh, so now let's go into the actual like menu for each mobile suit. Highlight a mobile suit, one you want to look at, and press circle. At the top is Customize. Next down is Tag, followed by Details. And if you need to know how to equip a mobile suit, this is where you go. Press Circle on this. The top one is equip, equipped for Ground. The bottom one is equipped for Space. And if you can see, there's tiny little uh, symbols that say G and S in the uh, corner so that you can tell when you've equipped something. Okay, so from the bottom, yeah, this is just a description of the mobile suit, which in Japanese, it's nothing you really need to know about. Um, this is, you can place or, or remove tags, tag one, two, or three, or remove. And now let's look at the customize menu. There's some stuff going on here you'll want to know. Okay, let's go with the obvious thing. 
Um, you can set up to three weapon sets with the square button. And that will give you a totally different weapon and uh, equip setup for each one. So if you have, like, specific things you want to go with specific weapons, you can change them around. Like, there's a, there's a custom part that helps reload ballistic weapons, and there's a custom part that helps reload beam weapons, so you can have different setups for ballistic or beam uh, damage and get yourself reloaded quicker. So this slot is the primary ranged weapon slot. And you can choose between anything you own, and it will show you what you don't own. If you know what it is, if you have at least one weapon of the type, it'll show you all of them. If you don't have a weapon of the type, it will show up as a question mark. Um, here's the ranged weapons, which I have the Gundam Hammer and the level 1 Beam Saber. So, as you can see, the uh, hammer's not available through the DP store yet. But... Oh yeah, one last thing. The numbers involved. Let me press L2 to go back to that. Okay, so the numbers for each weapon. Top is damage. Next down is range. Followed by number of shots. Number of shots for ballistic weapons and heat for beam weapons, which basically uh, how much heat is generated by each shot, I believe. And... Let's see. And the last one is its damage type, which is ballistic or beam are, are the options, basically. Um, okay, so those are your main weapons. These are sub-weapons. The head Vulcans, in this case, which, same stat block, basically. Uh, you know, damage, range, magazine, or heat, and, you know, damage type. Um, also, if there are any notes, for example, uh, this does have, uh, uses the ASL system. There's a light target lock that will help uh, aim. And this is, and the shield stat block is simpler. It shows the shield's hit points, the size, um, and I'm not sure what the second thing, well, the last thing is, but it says its type is shield. But, okay, so shields cannot be removed. They can be destroyed during battle once you've taken damage on them in excess of that hit point block. But here, um, with actual weapons, you can turn sub-weapons on and off with the triangle button. If you turn it off, it will not show up in your weapons rotation at all. So if you keep stumbling over something you don't use, like Vulcans on some mobile suits, you can just turn them off. These are the custom parts blocks. They, you can change the custom parts. You can put up to eight custom parts on a, any given mobile suit if they have enough uh, slots. As you can see, the Gundam has a lot of them. So I will go, at some later date, I will go into detail as to what the various parts do. But for now, I will just show some basic things for people who need to know. These orange boards are melee damage. The blue board is shooting damage. The ones that look like chainmail are melee defense. Honeycombs are beam defense. And steel bars are, are ballistic defense. Uh, this is hit points. I mean, that one at least you can tell fairly easily. Hit points 200. So that's just some basic stuff. Next up is the shortcut screen, which as you can see, you know, it still gives you these readouts so that you can place things. Because I disabled the head Vulcans, I need to re-equip them to my uh, quick set menu. To do that, to uh, put a, we a weapon on the shortcut bar, press circle, and it will give you these options, which are circle, X, square, and triangle, or remove. So, there, that's X. Now it's not X. Now it's X again, and it will stay X. But to access that quick menu in battle, you hold R2, well, no, excuse me, you hold R1 on the default controls. I will, we'll get to that, but, okay, so the last screen is skill. Every mobile suit has skills that give it special abilities above and beyond the basic. Um, the Gundam has shock absorbers, which uh, help, uh, help uh, minimize the stress to its legs to after jump and dashes. That's important because if your legs are too damaged and you try and jump or dash, you can actually get staggered for a second while they recover. 
Uh, quick boost increases jump by 10%. Um, this, I believe, is the dodge roll skill. It, uh, if you double tap the boost button while holding a direction, you will evade, get a brief window of invincibility, and get out of the way of something. This is Balancer. And Balancer is, is an important skill because it's what lets you use your melee a a attacks canceling out of a, uh, uh, out of a boost. So you, can, uh, so you can slash or tackle straight out of a boost with the Balancer skill. Um, this one I'm honestly not sure of. It says something about... Oh, yes, yes, this is, an, this is another important one. This is the melee skill. At level 1, the melee skill gives you two swings with the beam saber. And I'll go into that in the combat basics video as to, you know, what that means and how to use it. But, okay, that's, that's how you customize. So let's back out to the main menu and go to the other options. Okay, so here's the pilot customization menu. And it lets you select your gear for base camp, uh, your look in base camp, your look on Earth, your look in space. In space, helmets are required. Not really surprising. They're optional elsewhere, so just go to one, uh, go to one of the slots that's open, and you press circle to go into the menu. Fairly basic there. I don't have any accessories. I do have a backpack, but there's no point in wearing that in the base camp. I think it's required on, yeah, it's required elsewhere. So yeah, still no accessories, but the backpack is required. Yeah, and if, like I said, in space a helmet is required, because it is. As you can see, the headset's grayed out. You cannot breathe in space. You're not Batman. Okay, so the challenges menu has three sections. Uh, the daily challenges are the first tab. Press R1 to go to the, like, promotional challenges, because there uh, have been promos that have special challenges. That's how the Zagok was distributed. And lastly is rank up challenges. As you uh, see, to gain the next rank, I need to. I think it's. I think it's gain a certain amount of experience, beat my rival ten times, and I think it's win ten matches. I've already cleared the requirement of uh, owning fifty mobile suits or more. Um, these are the prizes you get. You get six thousand DP for getting the right amount of XP. Uh. A pilot suit for uh, uh, for the ten rivals, and a helmet for the ten uh, uh, for the ten wins. Um, just the r challenges are different at every rank, so that's just the one for one big diamond. Next down is the database, which is your play data, which has two different settings. Which is I think this is just general data shows my current rank. Shows the most ratings, uh, the, my current ratings, and my uh, the best rating I've ever had. Uh, shows how much experience, how many DP, and how many recycle tickets I've uh, acquired. Oddly, it doesn't show you how many tokens you've uh, uh, ever had, so you can't sit there going, Oh my god, how much money have I spent? Uh, next is the number of logins and consecutive logins. Apparently I missed a day there somewhere. Huh. But 61 uh, total logins, 25 consecutive logins, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 30, 339 matches played. Um, I'm not sure what this next one is, honestly. Um, game modes, I have played 2% uh, quick matches. It's really kind of hard to get quick matches going because the bonuses aren't as good as, uh, as rating matches and you can't invite friends or up to recently could not invite friends the way you can in custom matches. Um, I'll get into that at some later date. Um, game rules, I have played 90% basic and 10% ace match. Uh, broken, broken down by cost, I played the most no limits with 300 being the... Uh, actually, no, the mo uh, 300 is the most with no limits being the second. That makes sense since, you know, the Izaku 1 Sniper, which starts at 300 points, is my jam. Uh, shows which maps you played the most. Uh, the MS types you've used the most, which, unsurprisingly, the Izaku 1 Sniper comes in at the most, with uh, Generals being the second most. Uh, assaults being the least, I'm not good at it yet.
on your current login status. If you disconnect too many times, whether it's your fault or not, it will start to lower your status and you will get fewer benefits from winning games. The only way to clear it is play through rating matches until it puts you back in good status. That's the only way that, that you can clear your name. Um, the second status is it shows your rating match and quick match records specifically. Like if I honestly don't know what most of this is, I don't know how much it actually matters either. And here's item data, which it will show you info on, I'm pretty sure, yeah, every mobile suit you own, and it will show you things that uh, are higher levels, higher or lower levels of things that you own that you have not yet uh, gotten. So I have the level one Gundam, so I can see the stats for the level two and three. Same deal with the weapons and the custom parts and the wear and accessories, which since I don't have most of this and it and you have to have and there, it's not level based, there's just a lot of stuff I'm not going to see. Okay, next thing down is the store. If you want to buy tokens, this is where you do it. And the setup is to buy tokens, you will need yen. You will specifically need a Japanese PlayStation Network wallet card because it will probably not accept your credit card or PayPal to do this. There are online retailers that let you do this, so look around. Um, as you can see, it's about a buck a token. 108 yen is about a dollar, roughly. 1080 for 10, 32, 40, 31. As you can see, at 30 bucks and up, they start throwing a couple of bonus tokens. I have a feeling the bonuses will go up with time. But you'll notice it says all and token. There's no difference at the moment, but if it lets you buy things that are not tokens, they will show up here. Okay, here's the option screen. Here is the other complicated part of this and the last of it for today's video. Okay, so you can set up four different control schemes uh, for mobile suit and pilot for Earth and space. I have mine set up all the same just for consistency because, you know, it, it, my brain. Um, the default, the defaults are set up a little bit differently than I have them. Um, I have, I switched, generally R2 is fire and R1 is weapon switch. I switched them just because Gundam Battle Operation 1 had R1 as fire and that's what I'm used to. So I swapped those. But a change that I do recommend for other people at least on Earth, if not Earth and space. It can make things a little hinky in space. Um, I moved boost to L1 and jump to X. I, I switched them. And the reason for that being that you, uh, if you can boost with L1, you can steer with the right stick very easily while you are boosting. And that extra flexibility can make maneuvering, especially with an up-close assault type, a lot easier. So, um, just to give the other basics, L2 is kneel, or descend, depending. Um, square is reload. Triangle is tackle. Circle is interact, if there's something to interact with, or you can leave your mobile suit, that's how you do it. Um, R3 is scope, and L3 toggles the display as to whether, uh, as to whether or not your uh, teammate's stat bars are showing. Pilots are almost entirely the same. The difference being that uh, triangle instead of tackle is your combat knife. So if you get close enough to somebody, uh, to an enemy pilot, you can shank them. So that's, that's that. Okay, so what this is. This is the right stick uh, uh, axes and whether or not you want to reverse them. Uh, this is the vertical axes. Left is normal, right is reverse. This is horizontal axes. This, I am not 100% sure. I think it's vibration. I could be wrong. But it's either that or uh, target lock, which I don't remember. I think target lock isn't optional anymore. This is volume, which, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Background music, sound effect, voice. This is language. The options are... Uh, Japanese, Japanese, Chinese traditional and simplified, another version of Chinese, I believe, 
and Hangul if you're in Korea. Um, I, I'm best at not understanding Japanese, so that's what I stick with. This is miscellaneous. Um, uh, I'm not sure what this is. I'm not sure what this one is. So if you want to leave in the comments what this is for everybody, please. I believe this is display damage numbers. Important. And this is, I believe, display pilot names in the base camp. Lastly, this is another one good to know. This is a log out. If you want to quit for the day, you just go to here and hit OK. And it will save and take you back to the title. And as I said, this is saves. So if you just want to save, that's where you go. So we will do that, and tomorrow we will be back and look at some of the basics of mobile suit operation. Thanks for watching the Gundam Battle Operation 2 Basics series. If this was helpful to you, please check out patreon.com slash flailthroughs to help support the channel. There's also a donation tier there for requests, so if you want to see a specific set of weapons and mobile suits, any specific combination in Battle Operation 2 or any other Gundam game I'm playing, a couple of bucks a month will do that for you. So thanks again, and take care.